Right, so today I'm going to be showing you the Henry 200 from 2017 with a 1200 watt motor. Yes, you heard that right, 1200 watts on a 2017 Henry. The Hoover Enigma Evo, ignore the red one in the back, that's just a pure power that's going to be scrapped. And on the left, we've got a Vax Airlift Drive Plus. Okay, now this vacuum is a Hoover Enigma Evo rated at 350 watts. Yes, it is 350 watts. Actually, no, I was lying about that. Just like Hoover lied as well because this isn't actually 350 watts of power like the rating sticker actually says it is i've taken this thing apart to the motor and it actually is believe it or not 250 watts so that's basically 25 watts less power than a hoover junior in case you're not paying attention so that's quite mad isn't it for a clean air upright so that's the pure power i actually do prefer the enigma evo not as it is right now but once i modify it which i'll tell you about later I will like it a lot more than that red pure power because that's now being retired. Here it is at the moment. It's in pretty clean condition. I've just cleaned it up actually. And sorry about that. Anyways, I've cleaned it up. It's in really good condition. As you can see, it's got the tools from the pure power along with the hose. So basically the hose on this, right? Here it is, the original hose. It's actually a clear hose, but the reason why I put the pure power hose on it is because yes it's clean on one end but in the middle of the hose look how disgusting it is that's absolutely vile i could not clean that no matter how many times i washed it so i've just put the pure power hose on instead and it actually looks a lot nicer in my opinion this is the extension one and the crevice tool so there's your crevice tool which is quite weird actually it's a unusual crevice tool but that's on there anyways along with the extension tube i'm not sure if these were meant to have two of these because there's a location right there for another tool as well but i've got the dusting brush just not the stair tool but that will do here is the bag housing i've currently got oh yeah look how nice and shiny that is anyways i've got a pneumatic kepa flow bag in here at the moment because they do fit actually which is handy so you can have a good hepa flow bag what i do is i fold these bags up and then fold it from the bottom so that it can actually fit properly and then not have the edges get caught in the seals so it doesn't lose suction the post motor filters right here but let me just take the cable off first so i can then remove the hose easier now this is the carrier handle it has four functions number one is the lower cable hook number two is your carry handle which is quite a weird carry handle because the cable gets wrapped around here so it's not really a comfortable grip but that's there anyways it holds the hose and it also holds the tools pull the hose off that's your hose cuff unclip that unravel it that's meant to be clipped in there that just comes off and then it's a lot easier to just grab the filter out so just unclip that there's your post motor filter which is actually better than the pure power one because this is actually a HEPA filter and it has seals around it so that's nice to see but yeah it is pretty clean as you can see can't imagine there being a lot of carbon dust in here because number one the machine's got very low wattage the motor doesn't spin that fast at all compared to the higher wattage ones and also it's seen very little use i believe if you're wondering what that clip's for it's designed to be clipped onto the bottom of the post motor filter lid you can see the machine does follow you around because otherwise if you don't do that and you're using the hose the machine does fall over just like that so that's why it's important to use a clip but with better design they could have avoided that altogether and yeah the hose does remove from the machine like so it just untwists and there you are let me just quickly put this hose back on so let's clip that in wrap the hose around the handle make sure that the hose is securely fitted into the side of the head and then clip that in finally and there you are this one yes it is a bit of a rare model but not all pure powers had this however there's a bag full light which is nice to see forget the auto sense that's the boost button that's a green light telling that the carpet's clean and the orange light or amber light illuminating when the carpet is dirty but that's your bag full indicator that's meant to have it but this one just blanked off because this is now a budget vacuum whereas this was at the time a premium machine from hoover these machines suffer from a problem where they wouldn't stand upright anymore well they would but they just wouldn't lock upright because these pedals would actually break really easily whereas with this i feel like the design's better so people say pure powers have better build quality than the enigmas i actually disagree the plastic on these is shock absorbing and flexible so it's basically more robust and i can just do that you're not really meant to do that but it is a lot more stronger so i do feel like the handle release mechanism 
is better designed or better built even than the Kilo Powers are because I've not seen one of these with snapped foot release pedals yet so far. You got four height adjustments settings just like the Enigma has. Let's take a look underneath. So you know what the Hoover activator looks like. I'm not going to show you that at the moment because it's really badly wrapped up in stuff. But here's the newer brush bar as featured on the Enigmas, which is miles better. Better than any Pure Power brush bar, Dust Manager brush bar. And the Enigma brush bar is the one that they've done this with and they've absolutely smashed it. The bristles are extremely stiff, very dense, and they do a terrific job at performing on carpet. So I'm really happy with this. Now, because the suction on this thing is so weak, I'd say it's comparable to a Dyson V10 on the lowest setting, maybe even a V8 on the lowest setting. That's how bad it is, okay? Because of the low suction and airflow, it needs a really good brush bar to make up for it. And that's why they've introduced this. And yes, I have taken the screws out. I don't know what they're for. They don't balance away because even without the screws, the brush bar spins fine. So I don't see the point of that. And it looks ugly as well. So I just took it off anyways. It looks a lot better now. One difference I have found though is there's a lot more screws holding this entire head together because the head design is completely different with the way it's just held together even. So with the Pure Power, you've only got two screws. One here and one here and then the entire hood can be lifted off with this is different you haven't got any screws on either side what you have got instead is you got one two three four five six seven screws to undo and then the hood comes off so i don't know why they've done that it's a bit weird but it does hold in a lot better though and unfortunately this pure power is going to be scrapped because in storage in the shed this has happened i don't know how or why the head is now officially damaged and so i just use it as a donor machine for the enigma eva which is their new replacement as i was saying yeah i'm going to be doing a modification on this enigma eva so because the motor is really really weak and pathetic i'm going to take the motor out of this rated at 1500 watts the suction is really strong it's comparable to a dyson dc07 actually and then put it into this so i've got the best of both worlds with a really powerful motor and really powerful brush bar that's going to be a terrific machine i forgot to mention one more thing about the base of the vacuum so see these gaps right here these little grooves there's one here at the top before and after the brush bar they had rubber strips and they basically prevent the head from actually touching the floor properly and the bristles barely touch the carpet so i removed those and it actually made a huge difference in the performance all right, so here's the Enigma Eva all plugged in. Let's switch it on and show you how it works. I'm going to talk really quietly, actually, because this thing is really, really quiet. Yes, it is really that quiet. I can't believe how quiet it is. Not the quietest vacuum I've ever used, but it is very, very quiet. It's like using a G-Tech Air Ram because the brush does most of the work. There's barely any suction. It's not too bad, is it? I was impressed, actually. Let's see how it does on this. Let's pick most of it up. There's a few bits and bobs left, but yeah, now it's all gone, pretty much. Yeah, not bad. But as for actual suction power, it doesn't lift the carpet up at all. Well, maybe a few millimeters high, but not really now. So here's the suction. Very low suction. Yeah, now that I felt it by hand, it's reminding me. I'm pretty sure a Dyson V10 on the lowest setting with 16 air watts is more powerful than this thing. But this thing has a better brush bar, so I probably clean the carpet's better. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's the Hoover Enigma Evo. All right, so I've just finished doing that Henry torture test. Now moving on to the Vax Airlift Dry Plus. This is actually a really nice machine, you know. For one main reason that I like it is because of the power it has. So the reason why it's called Airlift Drive Plus is because it lifts off like so. It's like a shark lift away kind of design. Not powered lift away, but just lift away. So it's handy for vacuuming your car. Where the name Drive comes from is this brush bar. So it's a normal Vax Air brush bar, right? Very stiff bristles that are really dense, but these bristles protrude out of the sole plate so much that it actually digs into the carpet a lot more than a standard Vax Air. And as a result, it self-propelled itself forward. It's not because the wheels, they're just normal wheels. They're not powered at all. It's entirely because of the brush bar. So it just moves on its own. You have to push it. You've got LED headlights as well, unlike a normal Vax Air. Your hose on clips on the side, just like that. Although I don't like this design. I prefer the original Air Stretch because with this, when you tug on the hose, it just falls over. 
just like the Hugo Pure Power and Enigma. Your controls, this is the power on and off switch. That's your lift off button, as we discussed earlier. There's your brush control to switch the brushes on and off. And this button on the side is for your bin and cycle. So you press on that, and then that entire unit lifts off. Then we just enter this in a corner. Because I have been using this, you see, and it does work really well. But yeah, it's basically the same as a normal air stretch, apart from the lid being different. This unclips like a Dyson. It's a bit of damage there from earlier. I don't know how it happened, but it still holds. The filter's pretty clean still, not too bad. And the shroud and cycling also lifts out like so. If you're wondering why that's orange, is because this was missing when I got it. So I started to use the retaining lock for my other Vax Air. The pulse monster filter is right under the bin, so it just twists off. And I have vacuumed it off. It could do with the replacement, but it doesn't look too bad anyway, to be honest with that. So I just popped that back in. I don't think it's seen that much use entirely in its whole life, to be fair. But it is quite nice. I'm just going to get rid of it, though, because I don't feel like it performs as well as I want it to. I've got really high expectations, you see. It is above average for deep cleaning compared to other vacuums, don't get me wrong. But with my DC-17, this thing isn't as powerful, even with this aggressive brush bar. Because the DC-17 pulls out a lot more grit. The one thing I hate about this model that the air stretch actually has, but this one doesn't for some reason, is the air relief suction control. This one doesn't have it for some reason. So this machine does have the tendency to cut out on a lot of carpets and then just jam the brush, but I don't know why they didn't do that. But their remedy was to, for the hose attachment, they had a little adapter with bleed valves that wouldn't shut. So if you wanted full seal suction, you'd have to remove the adapter and then use it without that. Quite crazy, I know. So let's plug this in and I'll show you working. I'll vacuum this little area, which I've done with the Henry to see what we pick up. Because there are still some bits in there. Here it is in action. So we've got an empty bin, as you can see. Let's see what we can get out. Look at that. Look at this so far. That's a ton of that. And I'm loving this AstroTurf as well. It might be fake, but it's amazing. Why don't people have this in their houses? See the difference? Vacuumed area compared to unvacuumed area. You can really see the pile being lifted up. And there's a headlight as well. It's not that bright, but that's probably because we're outside. So I'm going to end it here now. And look at all this I picked up. That's basically half full. And I have vacuumed aggressively with the Henry, so I didn't really give it a fair chance, but it just goes to show. And this thing picked up quite a lot of dirt. Incredible. So I've got this mix right here, which is the natural looking mix on this lawn because I've got the lawn out for spring. This is my auntie's old Henry 200. She had it for about a year, I think, before she got a new vacuum. So it's mine now. I've only changed the toolkit. In other words, the hose, the wand and the floor tool. Now the machine itself works perfectly fine. This was a refurbished machine from a guy who does these art because I found one for her. Because at the time I never had one, so this was the next best thing. And he actually looked in a really good job at fixing this machine up. The only thing I don't like about it is the plug is a replacement. It's just a plastic plug on it, so at least it matches though, that's a good thing. But the cable's really nice and long. Let's see how long it is. So if you pull this out all the way, yeah, look how long the cable is on this thing. So as you can see, it says 1732 on the serial number there, which indicates that it's made in 2017 during the week 32 of that year and it says arg there as well assuming it's from argos maybe it's 620 watts or so it was until it had the replacement motor at 1200 watts which is a twin flow let's take a look inside it's got the light as well by the way which does work let's see if it illuminates if i plug it in might not be able to see though because we're outside but yeah you can just about see that oh yeah yeah it works right so opening the machine up Let's take a look inside. I have used it bagless once for this test, but I'm redoing this again now. But yeah, there's a filter. 
and there's the base. It's got tool storage on the back, which is handy, and it's also got the parking bracket feature as well. So yeah, all this cable, let's wind it back up. Right, now let's test it out on this mess right here. So Henry's obviously done a good job because Henry's are really good, aren't they? Let's see all the contents inside the base now. Lifting up the motor unit. That's what it looks like underneath, by the way. So it's pretty clean. The best way to do this when it's bag, let's just tip it at an angle so you get as minimal mess as possible. Although that's quite impossible to do anyways because Henry's used bag, are oh, quite messy. But yeah, there's all the contents, as you can see, successfully picked up. Now let's try it with the hose. 